Elton felt his knees buckle as he leaned against the alley wall, his vision blurring. His stomach churned with hunger, a reminder of how little he'd eaten in the last two days, just half of a burger he'd found discarded in a trash can the morning before. The pain of an untreated blister on his hand flared, his rare skin condition adding yet another layer of misery to his desperate situation. I must be cursed, he muttered, gingerly touching the lump in his jacket pocket. Inside was the only hope he had left, a sapphire ring that had belonged to his grandmother, the woman who had raised him and cared for him. She had passed away almost a year ago, and since then, his life had spiraled into chaos. After leaving the shelter where he'd been sent following her death, Elton had been homeless, scavenging for food, sleeping wherever he could. Now the only thing of value he had left was that ring, and as much as it pained him to part with it, he was left with no choice. He needed money for food, and even more, for medicine. His skin condition, epidermolysis bullosa, made his life a daily struggle. His blisters burst easily, and each wound needed bandages and antiseptic treatment, things he could no longer afford. As he approached a local pawn shop, he steeled himself. It was his last resort. He pushed open the door and walked up to the counter, heart heavy. Excuse me, he said to the middle-aged man behind the glass case, his voice shaky. How much can I get for this ring? The man barely glanced at him, more interested in adjusting the merchandise in front of him. But when Elton placed the sapphire ring on the counter, the man's expression changed. He picked it up, examining it closely, eyes wide. This is quite a piece, the pawn shop owner said, voice low with a mix of surprise and suspicion. Where did you get this? It was my granny's, Elton replied, his voice cracking with emotion. She passed away last year, and it's all I've got left. How much is it worth? The man's expression darkened, his face full of shock. Your grandmother's? This ring has been missing from my family for years. It belonged to my mother. Elton's heart skipped a beat. How could that be? He stared at the man, the full weight of his words settling in. I don't understand, Elton stammered, confused and disoriented. This was Granny's. How could it belong to your family? The pawn shop owner's eyes softened, filled with an odd mix of sorrow and recognition. Elton, isn't it? I thought you were dead. You disappeared 13 years ago, and no one ever saw you again. Elton felt the ground shift beneath him. Who, who are you? Before the man could answer, the door behind Elton creaked open. An elderly woman with graying hair entered, her face lined with concern. It was Linda, Elton's grandmother, or so he had thought. She had raised him, cared for him, but the truth of his past had always been a mystery. Linda looked between the two men, her expression unreadable. I see you've found each other, she said quietly, her voice tinged with sadness. Months before, Linda had gone to visit her son Jared, intending to check in on him after his recent divorce. Jared had always been distant, even as a child, and Linda had long worried about his ability to care for his son, Elton, especially with the challenges posed by Elton's rare skin condition. When she arrived at his home, Linda was shocked to find it immaculate, a far cry from the chaotic household she had expected. But when Jared opened the door, he wore a strained expression. Mom, you should have called, Jared said, rubbing the back of his neck awkwardly. Linda waved away his concern and stepped inside. I wanted to check on Elton, where is he? Jared's face darkened, and he sank into a nearby chair. Mom, I, I gave him up for adoption. Linda froze, disbelief flooding her. You did what? How could you? He's your son. Jared sighed heavily. It wasn't just the divorce. Elton's condition, epidermolysis bullosa, was too much. Megan couldn't handle it, and after she left, I realized I couldn't either. The medical bills, the constant care, it was too much. I didn't have a choice. Linda's voice rose, filled with anger and sorrow. You gave up your own child because of his condition, because it was too hard. That's unforgivable, Jared. Mom, I had no other options. 
Jared retorted, his voice raw with frustration. You don't understand the kind of life I was living. I had to make a decision, and it was the best one for Elton, he's better off now. Linda couldn't hear anymore. Fuming, she stormed out of the house and headed straight to the children's shelter where Elton had been placed. At the shelter, Linda demanded to see her grandson, but the staff informed her that Elton had already been adopted. The adoption had been finalized weeks ago. Devastated but determined, Linda refused to give up. She spent the next few days using every connection she had, eventually securing the address of Elton's new family. She arrived at a modest, well-kept home in a quiet neighborhood. A kind-looking woman named Gabby answered the door. After hearing Linda's story, Gabby invited her in. Elton's been adjusting well, Gabby said softly. His condition is difficult, but we've been working closely with specialists. He's a wonderful boy, and we love him dearly. When Gabby brought Elton into the room, Linda's heart swelled with both joy and sadness. She had finally found him, but this wasn't the reunion she had hoped for. She reached out, carefully cradling him in her arms. My sweet boy, she whispered, tears in her eyes. I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you. As much as Gabby sympathized with Linda, she made it clear that Elton was now their son. Linda knew she had no legal claim, but she couldn't help but feel that her place was with her grandson. Back in the pawn shop, Elton was still reeling from the revelations. He felt dizzy, unsure of what to believe anymore. Linda turned to him, her expression solemn. I tried to protect you, Elton. After I found out that Jared had given you up, I couldn't let you stay with strangers. So I took you. Elton's eyes filled with confusion. What do you mean, Granny? Took me from where? Linda hesitated, glancing at the pawn shop owner, who was still staring at the ring in his hand. I took you from the people who adopted you. I thought I was doing the right thing, keeping you with family, but maybe I was wrong. Elton felt a knot form in his stomach. The pieces of his fractured memory were slowly coming together. He remembered Gaby, the woman who had cared for him before Linda took him away. She had been kind, and though his time with her had been brief, he had felt safe in her home. The pawn shop owner, still holding the sapphire ring, looked at Elton with tears in his eyes. That ring belonged to my wife. We lost our son years ago, and when you disappeared, we thought we'd lost you too. I had no idea Linda had taken you. Elton's world spun. Everything he thought he knew was a lie. His whole life, he had been living with the wrong family, torn from the people who had adopted him and loved him as their own. And now, standing in this pawn shop, the truth was more painful than anything he could have imagined. I don't know what to say. Elton whispered, his voice cracking. I, I never knew. The pawn shop owner reached out, placing a hand on Elton's shoulder. You were taken from us, but now you're here. We found you again. Linda, standing in the corner, wiped away a tear. I thought I was doing the right thing. I'm sorry, Elton. I never meant to hurt you. Elton looked between the two of them, unsure of what to feel. The truth was out, but his heart was heavy with the weight of it. He had been lost, and now, he had to find his way back. Back to the family he had been taken from, back to the people who had always wanted him. In that moment, Elton made a decision. He reached for the ring, taking it from the pawn shop owner's hand. This belonged to your family, he said, his voice steady. I think it's time it goes back to where it belongs. The man nodded, tears streaming down his face. And so do you, son, so do you. Elton stood there, holding the ring in his hand, knowing that his journey wasn't over, but it was finally headed in the right direction, 